Good day guys, welcome to another exciting tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a six pieces skirt with train at the back. Okay, but this six pieces skirt, I'm going to be attaching it to your bodies later on to make a gown. But it's the same process, whether you're making a normal skirt or a six pieces skirt that you're going to attach to your bodies to make a gown, it's still the same process. So the measurements we'll be needing here is waist to hip, waist to above knee, waist to full length, round waist, bust pan or that. And over here I have three and a half yard of material to make this skirt please if you are not subscribed to my youtube channel please do subscribe and give it a thumbs up also share the word and invite your friends as well thanks so over here i have folded my whole entire three and a half yards of fabric into four parts but as you can see here i left out eight inches or nine rather i left out nine inches here to make the train you can make yours wider than this, but I think this is okay. So I folded my entire three and a half yards into four, leaving out eight, nine inches here for the train. Now, for if I were to make a normal six pieces skirt without a train, I wouldn't give out this much allowance here. I'm going to be giving out just one inch for zip allowance here. And I won't be needing up to three and a half yards, even though it will be too wide. So I have a whole lot of space here. I have about 26 inches left here. For me to work with the remaining part of the fabric i have 26 inches left for me here after minusing nine inches from my fold so this 26 inches is folded into four this other um eight i'll be nine inches is folded into two for my back piece now this method i'm going to be using here I use here for you guys is my own straight method of cutting six pieces skirt is very fast and efficient although there are other methods as well to make your six pieces skirt. So let's go ahead and mark out our length lines. Ahead to mark out our waist to hip line, waist to above knee line, and of course waist to full length line. At the waist line, you want to ensure that your material is at the very edge. But at the full length line here, you want to ensure that you leave at least some space for your full length line. This is because for the back, it's not going to be the same length for this tray. You're going to shift your hand outwards for the back side. So ensure that that's your full length line, you have about three to four inches. I'm using an ankara, so the ankara length is not very long. And of course, this ankara has a pattern, of course, I want my butterflies to be facing upwards. So after doing that, we want to go ahead. This is now going to be our middle front, our middle front of our skirt. So from here, I'm going to mark out four inches for your my bust pan. Now your bust pan will be different, whatever you're going to have. I'm going to be marking four inches from this point all the way down on a straight line. So I've gone ahead to mark out our four inches line all the way from the waist down to the full length here. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to calculate how wide my measurements will be. Now my client's round hip is nine and a half inches when divided into four. Now that is the largest circumference, so I'm going to be using that measurement for our calculation here. For this other edge, which is going to be representing the side of our six pieces, I'm going to be removing seven inches to slant out. Yours will be different depending on your measurement. So seven inches here. Now my client's round hip when divided into four is nine and a half. Nine and a half, I removed four here initially for the bust pan to draw our line here for the bust pan. So nine and a half minus four inches will be left with five and a half. After marking these seven inches, I'm going to mark out that five and a half inches here. All right, so five and a half. I'm doing this on the hip line because it's the hip measurement I'm using. So don't use, do on the hip line. If your hip, your maybe your client's round waist is bigger than the round hip, then you'll be doing the measurement using the waist. But in this case, my client's round hip is larger than her round waist, so I'm using the largest circumference I have here. So I took out seven inches here, then the remainder of her round hip, five and a half, after minusing the bust pan that I took here. So what is left now between the bust pan and this part is what I'm going to be taking out now. Yeah, I have exactly ten inches here all right so you may want to take out the 10 inches first or you take out eight inches here then before you measure your round hip the remainder of your round hip then leaving this other part for the shaping of the sides is your core so now that i have 10 inches remaining here i'm going to take out the 10 inches from this side all the way from this four inches bust span line i'm going to mark 10 inches from here all the way down as well so from this four inches bust line half, I'm going to have to mark out 10 inches all the way from the waistline down to the full length line. But if you notice here at the full length line, I still made a division of that 10 inches. I divided it into two. I marked out five inches here. There's a reason why I will come to that later. So now we want to go ahead and do our shaping. Now my client's round waist is seven and a half. 
Now, seven and a half, I've taken out four inches here for the bust pan. I'll be left with three and a half. So from this 10 inches line now, that's why I'll be marking out three and a half inch. My client's round weight is nine and a half, like I earlier said, and I'm taking out four inches here for the bust pan. I'll be left with five and a half. So I'm marking out my five and a half here. Now, for the above the knee line, we want to make it very curvy, very shaping. So what do we do? We minus one inch from whatever is we have on our hip here. So if we are having five and a half on the hip lay here, so the, at the above knee line, I'm going to be making it four and a half. So that means if your own hip, whatever you're having on your hip line is six inches minus one to five inches at the uh, above the knee line. It doesn't have a measurement, so we just minus one inches from whatever you have on the hip line here. So now if you go ahead and mark out two inches. You, at your knee curve, the, the clothes will be very tight and shapey. I may not be able to work um, very well. So, but I'm just going to make out just one inch for my client. Then you want to go ahead and add your allowances, your seam allowances. I'm adding two inches seam allowances. From this side, I'm adding two inches. From here, after, I'm adding two inches. But for this knee curve, I'm going to reduce it by one. I'm adding just one inch allowance for that. So you want to go ahead and connect your markings. Please use your hip curve your French top set if you have that. So from this point now, I'm going to be drawing a line. Please not do it on the actual measurement. Make sure that you have already added your allowance. It's from the allowance line that you'll be drawing this line to like to this other edge of your fabric. Please use your ruler. So that will give us our side of the six pieces. Four sides. Now remember this five inches mark that I took here. I'm also going to be drawing a slanting line from this 10 inches line uh, beginning at the knee curve. Remember, our six pieces start coming out at the knee level. So, from the knee curve, I'm going to be slanting out to that line. The same thing opposite, I'm going to do the same thing opposite it from this four inches that line at the knee curve. I'm going to also be drawing the slanting line to meet here as well. So, this is our six pieces all put simplified together. Now, because it's going to be having a tray. Now, a normal um, six pieces, we're supposed to be giving it just one inch for the zip allowance all the way down. But because this is a tray, our one inch is going to be stopping at the knee curve. But the remaining parts from the waist to the above knee is just going to be one inch. We need a normal one inch zip allowance from the waist to above the knee. Then, from this above the knee, we're still going to draw a slanting line outside. Remember here, I gave nine inches for the train allowance yours can be 10 inches we are using up to four yards of material but i'm using just three and a half yards of material here so now we are going to go ahead and cut out on the border lines this side here is going to give us the four sides two for the front two for the back remember we made our fold into four one two three four so this side is going to give us the four sides now this part is going to give us the middle front this other two sides is going to give us the middle back tray so for this side, I'm going to be cutting this way and this way. Then for this middle side, I'm going to be cutting this way. Then for the back, I'm going to be cutting this way. Now we have to ensure that our legs are okay. Now for this side, we don't have any issue. So our measurements for this, the length for this side is going to still be the same. It must meet. But I'm going to be trying my best to curve it out so I want to go on a straight line like this but from this side I'm going to make sure that it reaches this end for the back side okay so I've gotten that let me deal with the down first before I go ahead and cut the side and show you and I have to trim this downside on a slanting line but our front needs to be shorter than our back side so I'm going to go ahead and maintain this full length line that I initially drew for the front side so as you can see for the front middle part is I'm maintaining my normal full length line but for the back part I'm slanting it down to make the train now if it happens that you want a longer train you have to ensure that your material here is goes down but you can even go down as far as five seven six inches to get a longer train at the back so i'll go ahead now and cut it out on our border lines so i've cut it out on our border lines you can see this is coming out this as well is coming out so these two will give us our front this is our front and this is our back as you can see this is the zipper side 
one of this, this one will be coming here, and so that one will be attached here as well. So, it's our back. And so that side is not our front piece. And this is our front piece as well. Now, if you want to make it full lining, you have to go ahead now and cut out your lining. But I'm not going to be making full lining for this. I'm going to be making half lining. But before I go ahead and make our half lining, if it is full lining, you have to cut it individually. But for my half lining, I'm, going to, I'm not going to be cutting it individually. I'm going to make the joinings first. I'm going to make the joinings first. So this will be going this way, like this. I'm going to be sewing here, all the way down. To give me this side. And this one, so I'm going to be cutting it here. And sew all the way down also. To give me this side. The same thing goes to the back. And the zipper attached. And I'll show you when I'm done sewing.